One of the features that is included with Earth Network's Spirit Maps is a full suite of weather alerting capabilities. Let me walk you through how to use weather alerts and configure weather alert rules in Earth Network's Spirit Maps. Weather alert rules are not configured in the Earth Network's Spirit Map user interface. Instead, customers will want to go to their Earth Network's Enterprise Portal account at profile.earthnetworks.com and in the left-hand sidebar, click on Alerting to open the Earth Network's Rule Configuration pane. Under this Earth Network's Rule Configuration pane, the magic number that customers need to keep in mind is the number three. There are three tabs at the top of the pane. Manage Locations, Manage Delivery, and Manage Rules. Under Manage Locations, there are three ways that customers can configure and manage locations on which to receive weather alerts from. Customers can choose to manually add a location using an address or a latitude and longitude or new in Sphere Maps customers can now use their smartphone location using the Sphere mobile app to allow for location-based alerts as well. Now for location-based alerts, we have another video at support.earthnetworks.com that shows customers how to fully work with location-based alerts. But I will qu quickly mention that once the customer has gone through the steps to enable location-based alerting in the Sphere mobile app, that smartphone should automatically show up in the list under Managed Locations, as you see here with my iPhone. Now, if that device is not showing up in the list, the customer can select Refresh in the upper right corner of the screen, and that should refresh the list and allow that device to pop right up. For customers that do want to manually add locations under Manage Locations using an address or a latitude and longitude, they simply click on Add New Location. They'll then give the location a name. In this case, I'm just going to say Earth Networks Headquarters. And then the customer will then choose either address or latitude and longitude and then populate either the address or the latitude and longitude. Now, in our case, latitude and longitude is the most precise way to receive weather alerts, and it is the most accurate way to add a location under managed locations, but we will take either one. Once you've chosen the address or latitude and longitude and populated the information there, simply click on Create Location, and that will create the location and save it under managed locations. I'm going to back out of this for now, and go on to manage delivery. And again, the magic number three, there are three different ways to manage delivery of alerts in Sphere Maps. These are the devices that actually receive the weather alerts. Customers can choose to receive weather alerts either using an email address, so just using traditional email. Customers can choose to receive weather alerts via a text message. The customer simply needs to format the phone number as an email address to make this happen. And also new to Sphere Maps, customers can choose to receive push weather alerts using the Sphere mobile app on the smartphone. For customers that are using push alerts with the Sphere Maps, uh, Sphere Mobile smartphone app, customers will simply download the Sphere Mobile app onto their device, and sign in with their credentials, and then the app should automatically populate here in the list, as you see again with my iPhone here under Managed Delivery. Again, just like under Managed Locations, if smartphones that are signed into Sphere Mobile is not appearing in the Managed Delivery tab, simply select the refresh button and that should pop it up on the list. Now to add an email address or to create a text message with the phone number formatted as an email address, the customer will want to simply click on add new device and give the device a device name. I'll just put my name down in this manage delivery tab. The type that select will be email and then the customer will simply fill in an email address if they want it to go over traditional email. 
for a phone number, the phone number has to be formatted as an email address, and we've got a great article at support.earthnetworks.com that shows how to do this using all of the major wireless carriers. When done, simply click on Create Device, and that creates the device under Manage Delivery. Again, I'm going to back out of that and go on to the third tab, Manage Rules. With the Manage Rules tab, there is a way to bulk import and export rules, but what I'm going to show today is how to create a new rule from scratch. And to do that, the customer simply selects Add New Rule. The customer will then want to give the rule a rule name. For example, I can say Lightning at Earth Networks Headquarters. The customer will then want to choose a location from the list. If they're wanting to use a location-based alert from a smartphone, then they will want to choose the smartphone from the list. If they want to choose a manual location from the list that's an address or latitude and longitude, then they simply select that from the list. And then again, to receive the alerts, they will need to choose the device. If they want to choose a device that has the Spirit Mobile app installed, they will want to choose the smartphone from the list. If they want to choose an email or a phone number that's been formatted as email address for email or text messaging purposes, they would then choose that from the list instead. In my case, I'm going to select iPhone. The customer can also choose to send a test alert if need be to test to ensure that it is working. And the final thing that the customer needs to do is to choose what type of weather alerts that they want to receive when creating this alert rule. And again, the magic number three works here as well because there are three categories of alerts that are available. Observation alerts, weather service alerts, and lightning alerts. And the one thing that I will need to mention, some of these categories do allow you to have more than one type of weather alert under the category. For example, under weather service, you can have multiple alerts under the one category. But for customers that want to take advantage of all three categories of alerts, customers will need to have at least one alert rule per category. In some cases, they may want to even have more than one alert rule per category, but they will need to at least have one for an observation alert, one for a weather service alert, and one for a lightning alert to take full advantage of the range of rules that are available. A quick rundown of what is available with these different categories are observation alerts are based on the observations from the Earth Network's weather network and allow customers to receive alerts based on different conditions that happen with observations. For example, under outdoor temperature, I could say to send an alert if the temperature drops below 32 degrees or if the temperature gets above 100 degrees. And we have all sorts of observations available based on our observation network with wind gust, humidity, heat index, pressure, rain rate. We have the wet bulb temperature, wind speed, <clears throat> dew point wind chill, daily rain, pressure rate, wind speed, all sorts of things available. And we do also now have the capability in Spirit Maps to show the wet bulb globe temperature 10 minute average. Now, we have another video at support.earthnetworks.com that goes more into the wet bulb globe temperature. And for customers that are interested in this, I want to direct them to that other video on there. Under the weather service alerts, we have all sorts of alerts available from the National Weather Service. All the severe alerts, all the flooding alerts, all the winter alerts, all the non-precipitation alerts such as heat advisories and frost and fog and winds and air quality alerts. We can do fire weather, tropical weather, coastal weather, civil emergency messages even if the 911 system goes out. And with any of these weather service alerts, the customer simply selects them, for example, tornado warnings, and we can include the watches as well by simply checking the include watch box. 
In addition to the weather service alerts, we do have the ability to issue those exclusive Earth Network's dangerous thunderstorm alerts as well. Those are the purple polygons that are displayed on the Earth Network's Spirit Maps interface. These are generally about 50% faster than traditional weather service alerts and it gives about a 40 to 45 minutes heads up that severe weather is in the area based on the Earth Network's Total Lightning Network. In addition to the weather service alerts, we also have the ability to issue lightning alerts based on the Earth Network's Total Lightning Network. And so we can choose to display how far away lightning is. For example, I could say lightning within 10 miles and the duration I could say, for example, every 30 minutes. And we can also choose to send an all clear. So if there is no lightning within 10 miles, within 30 minutes, we would send the all clear as well. In addition to working with these different alert rules, we do also have the ability to set silence times for any of these different alert rules. And we've got a great article at support.earthnetworks.com that goes further into how to work with silence times for alert rules. Once the customer has configured the alert rule the way they want it, they would simply click on add rule and that will create and add the rule in the system. Again, I'm going to back out of this and go back to the manage rules pane. The last thing that I need to mention to customers is when creating alert rules, to make sure that the enabled column under the alert rule shows yes if the customer wants the alert rule to be active. We do have the ability to disable alert rules by setting this to no without having to actually fully delete the rule. Now, if the customer wants to fully delete the rule, they can fully delete the rule using this button here, but we do have the ability to toggle alert rules on and off. No means the alert rule will not fire, Yes means the alert rule will fire, and so when creating alert rules as a final step, any alert rules that the customer wishes to have active, they need to be set to the yes position under enable. And at any time, if the customer needs to temporarily disable the rule without using the scheduled alert silence times, the customer can go in and change it to no to disable alert rules. One final mention that I will make concerning this alert rules configuration pane is that customers can see what locations are displayed under managed locations on the Spherit Maps map. All the customer needs to do is go back to the Spherit Maps user interface, open the map layers panel, and at the bottom of the map layers panel, the your locations section allows them to click on that and then simply see on the map the locations that are available under this alert rules pane and be able to see if any of these are currently under an alert or not using color codes. So that is how to work with alert rules in Earth Network's Spirit Maps. It's a powerful capability that allows customers not only to visualize their weather data in these Spirit Maps user interface, but also to receive weather alerts based on changes to our observation network, to weather service alerts, to Earth Network's dangerous thunderstorm alerts, and to exclusive alerts from our Earth Network's Total Lightning Network.